so we think, A, this is great. They mentioned postdocs. They say we're important. They say there's going to be more fellowships. Then there came the second announcement was said that um, postdocs are taxable, period, and stop. And this leads back to an announcement from the conservatives, actually, in 2006, where they introduced the educational tax credit. And the educational tax credit in 2006 said that people receiving fellowships or scholarships in pursuance of training could benefit from a non-taxation of that scholarship or fellowship. And so it obviously applied to graduate students. And graduate students who've received scholarships have not been paying taxes on those monies since then. Where it became confusing is what about fellowships? Because we are, there was this belief that we are in training, but it was not formalized in that same way. And most universities in 2006 couldn't even tell you how many postdocs they had, let alone if they were training or not. So there was, an, and then there were some institutions that already had in place training and following their postdocs. So what we saw was between 2006 and 2009, about 11 or 12 universities moved to register their postdocs, to give them formalized training, and then they would give them the documents they needed to claim the educational tax credit, which was a T2202A and a T4A with a coding 05, which indicates scholarships and fellowships. So there are about 11 institutions that have been doing that with varying levels of success. And so as a national organization, we said, well, this is just not fair. Postdoc is a postdoc is a postdoc. Why would a postdoc in Halifax be able to claim a tax exemption, why as a postdoc in Vancouver cannot? So in January of 2009, we wrote the CRA. And we said, whatever it is, it needs to be uniform. Why is this, why is this valid here and this not valid here? And so we think that this kind of um, action may have stimulated the government to just say postdocs are tax and stop. So what have we done since then? While a lot of other institutions were saying what a great budget this was for postdocs, we said we think the fellowships are fantastic, but this tax break then creates this, this two-tiered system between graduate students and postdocs. And so we put out a media release, and that was picked up by Nature, by uh, some uh, journals such as The Citizen and The Edmonton Journal and it was picked up by research money. So these are the people that were interested in what we had. Um, we sent out, we formed a letter to all members of government around science, innovation, uh, universities, and um, in, uh, finance, and, and told them uh, basically the whole story. Uh, we presented an online petition, which we encouraged the government to talk to us. Um, and to consider holding off because they made the announcement in March. That meant everybody who had been not paying taxes up until January were now on the hook for all those back taxes. So one of the things we said was hold off for this year and so we can at least try to, um, to, to figure out how we're going to, to, to change this policy in some of these institutions. Um, we found out later that online petitions can't be presented to government. So then we did a hard copy petition with human signatures, and that has been presented in Parliament. Unfortunately, to date, we have gotten uh, no response from the, the government itself. And so in our petition, we put a couple of things that we recommended. We recommended recognizing the training and education status for the first six years, um, changing tri-cancel minimum stipends, um, and then mandating that that PDF salaries actually include things like experience. Because as you've seen from our, our stipend levels, they rarely raise among the minimum. So that means that postdocs who've been postdocs for five years usually get the same stipend as postdocs who've been postdocs for one year. And then, of course, we, um, I mentioned that we sent this letter to the CRA requesting a formal uh, ruling. And we received a reply on April 28th, 2010. And their reply was that we should never have had access to this tax benefit. It was always wrong. We never should have done it. Um, and stop. Why, if it was so clear, it took them 15 months to write us and tell us, I'm not quite sure. So, and we're still trying to assess what implications that will have for postdocs who, who paid taxes, who did not pay taxes during that period of time. 
So that's something that we're, we're hopefully sorting out now, and I, I don't have a, a straight answer for that right now. So what's next? Like, where do we go from here? So basically what we've been told, unless something changes at the governmental level, postdocs from now on in will be taxed. So we're going to continue advocating that right through the Senate, right through till it's signed into law. Um, but we, what, we've, what we've said is, okay, obviously if we're not trainees, then we, our compensation cannot continue to be as trainees because it will be a severe detriment to attracting talent and innovation and highly qualified personnel at this level into this country. So if assuming that the taxation is clear, funding levels have to go up just to give us a livable wage. Um, $38,000 for the average 30-year-old with a spouse and a child and student loans is just not acceptable. Um, and then what we've said is that it requires us to reanalyze our, our, our status. If, if the government is telling us very clearly that we don't fall into this trainee student um, clade, then maybe what really we need to be fo focusing on is moving into an employment status. But I'll be the first one to say that we should not rush into that status for a couple of reasons. Um, currently, there are very few academic institutions that recognize their postdocs as employees. I can think of two or three. They're very, they're few and far between. And funny enough, the impetus for changing their status was often due to a ruling from the CRA. So the CRA has been very back and forth with regards to how postdocs should be treated. But if we immediately advocate for a change to employment status without changing funding levels first, this is what's going to happen. It would immediately mean that every postdoc would have to have EI and CPP deductions from their stipends at their current levels. And each one of their mentors would be required to pay their set of deductions, which can be up as high as, as low as 8 or 9%, but as high as 15 to 16%. And that's not currently accounted for in anybody's budgets. So that would happen immediately. But it would not result in the things that people, a lot of postdocs think that employment status would result in. It will not result in extended health benefits. It will not result into a lot of these other things. Because if you look back to the definition of a postdoc, we are temporary employees. We are not, it's not a career choice being a postdoc. It's a career progression choice. So most universities would classify us as contract term employees. And depending on the institution, depending on how it, how it classifies people, that does not necessarily mean you'll get any sort of extended benefits. So, although employment status would give you things such as employee rights, the access to things like uh, EI, for things like paternal maternity leave, um, and paternity leave, it would, it would, at the end of the day, for most postdocs, in a good situation with a good mentor in a good lab, it would only mean a lower stipend. So what we're saying, and what we caked a lot of flack for, is that we need to increase the funding levels before we even consider this, just so we break even. Because otherwise, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a very hard go to have, say, the average postdoc at McGill, who at the beginning of the year was making $40,000 tax-free. In March, there, that stipend become ta became taxed retroactive to January. If we change the employee status, then retro retroactive or not retroactively, they would be playing EI, CPP on top of that. So the take home for somebody, again, who's in their early 30s, may or may not have children or a spouse, it could be very detrimental. So we're, we're as a national organization, we're stepping very lightly before we advocate this because we appreciate, as postdocs ourselves, that that could be a huge financial burden. Mm -hmm.